A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Okay, we all know the song, right? But imagine these characters that we see every day of our lives on our phones uh, disappearing off the face of the earth forever. My family immigrated to America from the Philippines uh, to search for a better life, you know, to, because of martial law in our home country. You know, we wanted to uh, live the American dream and apparently a crooked bull haircut. I remember a classmate asking me, you know, uh, what are you? And I said, oh, I'm American. And he said, no, you're not. And I was kind of confused. So I went home and asked my mom. I said, mom, this kid at school said I'm not American. And she said, of course, you're not. You're Filipino. I said, oh, OK. So then I go back to school. I go back to that kid. I say, hey, uh, I'm Filipino. And he goes, what's that? And that was the first lesson in the complexities of identity. So my father, my grandfather used to uh, take me to Chinatown in San Francisco. And I would ask him, like, you know, what's that uh, funny writing on the walls? I was young, I was about eight years old, and he said, yeah, that's how Chinese people write. And I said, well, how did you write, you know, as a kid growing up in the Philippines? And he looked at me, he said, we wrote in English. And that seemed kind of strange to me. I was still young, I couldn't really comprehend why, but it was always lingering in the back of my mind. So I was looking at these ancient books that no longer exist. And I found this image. This is a Katipunan flag. The, uh, the Filipino rebels that were fighting against Spain, fighting the colonists and trying to get our freedom for our people. And when I saw this flag, I said, oh, that's kind of cool. Looks like a letter I in the middle, standing for independencia. But later I learned that it was our ancient writing system prior to colonization, and that was the letter ka. You know, little did I know that this would uh, change my life. So after high school, I went to the Philippines, you know, to find myself, stay for about six, eight months, you know, have some fun, but I ended up staying for about eight years. I learned the basics of the pre-Philippine uh, writing systems, and while there, I learned that there were only about three tribes left that still write it, but today, in 2018, there's only one tribe left. So this is a napkin with the name Nikki written on it. And this is how I paid my dues, learning the script. My cousins and friends, they would bring me to parties, say, hey, come over, here's my American cousin. He can write your name in the old alphabet. People would line up, and it would be like, all right, what's your name, Nikki? And then, all right, let me write that down for you. And so that's how I kind of learned it, learned the social value, but hopefully none of them got them tattooed because I was still young. Some of them might have been wrong. So at that time, call centers were popping up all over Manila. And everyone would say, hey, you speak good English. You have a good accent. You could be a manager someday. And I was like, nah, I'm too good for that. I'm not going to work at a call center. I'm going to go back to America, start a cultural renaissance based on the things that I've learned in the motherland, and you know, get some people woke. So I'm back in America, all hyped up, ready to start something. And guess what job I got? A call center. As I was working at a call center, getting yelled at, eight hours a day because an ottoman or sofa was a minute late. You know, it was pretty tough. So when you're down in the dumps, you shouldn't get a tattoo, but I did. So I got a tattoo of uh, my family name on my arm. And when I got that tattoo, you know, I started to uh, practice writing again and, and starting to get the cultural appreciation of it. I taught myself how to make websites only because I wanted to upload a picture of this tattoo and have a conversation about it. So what happened was people then would ask me, hey, can you translate my name? Can you write love for me? And I would do that maybe three or four times a week. At that time, I was still at my, my job, which I didn't really like. So I did an experiment. So what if I put a PayPal link? And let's see what happened. Would anyone pay for this? Put it on there, went to sleep, woke up the next morning, checked my email, cha-ching. Five whole dollars. So next thing you know, I had a little side hustle going on. 
And that's when it you know, kind of changed. It went into a clothing line, created products, uh, created an app, creating an online school, uh, worked on a documentary, and published books, even though I wasn't the greatest writer. So what happened was, because of the, the business, I had a lot more freedom uh, to do artwork. So as I was doing the artwork, you know, I, I was able to pay the bills, but have the privilege to do art. People then started asking me, hey, can you do this uh, artwork live? And I thought, I think I can. And I just started to do it. Um, so this last photo that you're going to see right here is it was at the uh, Asian Art Museum in San Francisco. Um, but while performing was fun and interesting, and, but I did get a lot of questions like, is that Japanese? Are you Japanese? Are you Arabic? Are you a quarter Japanese? Are you Italian? Are you this or that? And it brought me back to my childhood of the question of, what are you? I found out that I needed to give context to my artwork and speak about it. And that's when I started to travel. I go to a lot of universities and um, uh, museums to talk about the, the work, um, just to give that context and tell the stories. But after talking to you know, thousands of students and, and my clients um, during my travels, I found out that you know, they actually want something deeper. It's not about the writing systems. You know, learning the writing system is easy. It's a system, it can be learned. It's not about the artwork. No, it's why did they want the artwork. It's not about tattoos. You know, anyone get a can get a tattoo, but you know, what is the deeper meaning of it? Why get it in the first place? So what's that all about? It's about this identity. My identity doesn't matter, said nobody. So I use writing systems for cultural identity and expression of that identity. And that expression leads to value. There's social value, there's economic value, and there's cultural value. And that leads to preservation. Because without value, why would you preserve something? So let's do this test. Um, in your head, or no, let's do this. Let's raise your hand if you recognize what culture these uh, writing systems come from. What part of the world? All right, that last one, I heard a lot of people got that. You guys must like uh, Korean barbecue. Made you hungry. But you know, I found out that most people can, while well, you cannot read the writing, but you recognize what culture it comes from. So in an age where we're bombarded with images of who we're supposed to be, you know, what we're supposed to dress like, we ask these questions, who am I? Where do I come from? Who's my family? Who are my ancestors? You know, if you're not asking these questions right now, I guarantee you will be in the future. You know, in my experience, people come to me for artwork and consulting, almost, you know, like telling me, like, I need something deeper. You know, it's probably because they've gone through a period of their life, whether it's a death of a loved one, birth of a child, a marriage, you know, a new job. But after you are stable, you know, you have the safety nets of food, clothing, and shelter. You know, what is next? Better yet, you know, what is left? It's your family, the stories. You know, where you were, where you are, where you're going. Learning about your culture. You know, it is a portal to others and our inner connection. When we dig deep enough, we'll find common ground. We find love and compassion. There's an old saying from my country, Ang hindi magmamahal sa saringling wika daig pa ang hayop at malansang isda. That translates to, for those that don't love their language, is worse than a beast and a stinky, rotten fish. 
Don't be a stinky, rotten fish. You know, these are the characters of my ancestors. What are the characters of your ancestors? And what would they write? Salamat. Thank you.